welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla and today we're gonna be learning about um, what it's like to be disabled in general. Um, I did a video about this when I like what it's like to be disabled in your 20s but you know what if you're a person um, whoever if you're disabled what it's like um, from me. I've been disabled since birth and this is June. I'm sorry she's breathing really hard. We went for a walk um, and she's my She's your response service dog. So anyway, hi, I'm Kayla. I um, was born deaf and then moved into hard of hearing, blah, blah, blah. Then when I was 10, I got hearing aids. Here's my hearing aids. I feel like anyone who's watched my channel, they hear the same story all the time. So I'm so sorry um, if you have watched this and heard this a lot. But when I was also going into elementary schoolish around, I was diagnosed with auditory processing disorder and executive functioning disorder um, with kind of like in shorter words, auditory processing disorder isn't just for people who have hearing issues. Um, it's basically when you do hear something, you can't like figure out what it's saying. Like to me, I can say, hey, my name is Kayla and I will hear there's literally like, I just am like, are you speaking English? Like, I have no idea what you're saying. And it's just like my brain just jumbles it all up. And it's really hard for me to kind of understand people. And it kind of like tricks my brain sometimes with my hearing. Um, so that's why a lot of people with hearing loss may have it. But it's not just for people with hearing loss at all. Um, then executive functioning disorder is a lot of things. It's how you process information. Can you even process it? Um, like a good thing is, for me, I have to write a list of things. So if someone says, Kayla, can you go to the grocery store and then go pick up something and then go to Noah's house and then come home? Like to me, I'm like, like I only got one of that and like it's really hard for me. So then I went through all of, sorry, um, I went through all of school with a lot of learning disabilities and because I had hearing loss, I went to a speech therapist for 10 plus years. Um, and so that's why a lot of people, they're like, you're not deaf, you can talk, which is like, it's a whole nother video um, of how annoying that comment is. Um, but I also went to speech therapy. I went to tutoring every summer. I'm really fortunate and both my parents are in education. My mom, um, she started off as a PE teacher and now she has worked her way up and is a department supervisor. And my dad used to be a history teacher and basketball coach and worked his way up to be a principal um, of an elementary school. So they both understood education very well. They also worked in a school specifically for kids with special needs before they even met each other and everything. So they understood very well, which I am so fortunate because so many kids with disabilities don't have that access in life and they get really far behind because a lot of parents, they don't want, they don't want their kid to be labeled as someone with a disability. It's a very shameful thing for people, which I don't really understand. My parents are always very upfront with me age appropriately um, and they always, I have an older brother who's a year older, they always expected us to do well in school. I think everyone wants us, every kid to do well. Um, but for me specifically, they held me to the same standard, it was equal with my brother, but if I could study for 10 hours and get an F and my brother could study for a half an hour and get an A. So they also saw that disparity of like, you work really hard and you're getting worse grades. Though, Sometimes I did not get the best grades because I did not study, um, but that was not all the time. But what it's like being disabled. It is having invisible disabilities specifically for me. Um, I was then diagnosed at 20 with epilepsy by having my first seizure skiing. You know, I never skied. And then this one day, me and my former boyfriend wanted to go skiing since he was from another country and he didn't really ski there. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Connecticut has places. So we went and I had a seizure and my life has gone downhill with epilepsy since. 
and now I have a surface dog. Um, but anyway, it's been really hard. Um, I feel like a lot of people are really judgmental on just outer appearance in general, whether you don't have a disability or not, of if you're skinny or not, if you, what color hair you have, what color eyes you have, if your skin is clear, if you wear makeup, if you don't wear makeup, and then just being disabled in itself is really hard. So my learning disabilities, they were really difficult. Um, I was able to go to college, which is really nice, um, and I enjoyed it, but having to deal with the disability center nightmare nightmare like they want to give you as least amount of services as possible um i had a woman say just go to the first class and then see if you really need all those services you're asking for and um one of it was since i was required to be in class or i'd get an f if i missed a class um and if i missed more than 30 minutes then i would fail and I was like, no, I need like this accommodation that allows me to miss class just in case. And she said, no, wait for the first class. First class in, I have a seizure and then projectile vomiting while seizing, while turning blue since I stopped breathing. And I missed 45 minutes because I'm recovering from a seizure. And I went back and I was like, like do you think just one class just like, it's gonna make me say, actually, I don't actually need how my disability, you know my disabilities more than me. So thank you so much for telling me I don't need them. Um, so that itself is really hard. But then, um, let's see, like socially, um, a lot of people just don't really believe you at all. I don't really know why. Um, when you tell people you have disabilities, they don't really believe you. They'll test you on it. Like when I told people like I'm hard of hearing, I have hearing aids, they'll go, what am I saying? How many, whatever. Or it's just like stupid things, they'll always test you. Um, but more specifically, when I have a service dog, I, epilepsy is not always an outwardly disability. It's a neurological disability. Um, and people will stare at me ask me, oh my god, are you training this? It's so amazing you're training it for disabled people. And it's really hard. Um, but one thing I have learned is just, I, everyone stares and like, you just gotta, you gotta ignore it. Everyone will ask questions. And like, to me, I, I really had to learn myself. They're just curious more than anything. And it's not coming from an ill attention. They're just uneducated. And the best way to educate them is to be kind and answer their questions instead of being angry, which I used to do um, because they would ask such stupid questions. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, being disabled has definitely a lot of side effects of just going on medication. I'm tired all the time, but you know, life goes on and I still have to get a job and function normally in society. Um, I don't have a car because of my disability. And luckily I did get a voucher from the, um, what is it, Epilepsy Foundation to get Ubers, but that's only a one-time thing in my lifetime. It's $50, but I don't have a car. So I have to go grocery shopping and it's a lot of money to be disabled. I have to go to the doctor and my good doctor is an hour away. So there's so many things that people don't even realize and think about what comes into being disabled. So yeah, if you have any questions, comment down below. Um, yeah.